Hi, everyone. In previous videos, you learned about classification. And today, we're going to learn about clustering, another very popular way to make sense of data. We'll start with an overview of clustering, and then we'll dive deeper into three very popular techniques, k-means, hierarchical clustering, and db-scan. So clustering is what we call uh, the most common type of unsupervised learning. And the high-level idea is to group similar things together. So it's called unsupervised because the model that we learn uh, is through examples that do not have any labels, unlike classification, uh, where we have some known data with labels. And our task there was to figure out the label for the unknown data. So for clustering, we do not have any label uh, data at all. So we can find a lot of application of clustering. For example, in healthcare, we want to group patients together so then we can apply similar treatments to them. Or in medical imaging, we may want to identify similar types of tissues. Or for text document, we may want to do something called topic modeling. So figure out what are the topic of documents and also maybe some common words in each document cluster. Or in market segmenting, we may want to group consumers or uh, people together so that we know how to uh, apply similar marketing strategies on them. So in this video, you're going to learn three clustering techniques. So these are what I would consider the most common and the techniques that you would need to know. So the first one is k-means, second is hierarchical clustering, and the third is db-scan. Of course, there's a lot more that you would want to learn, but these would be the most fundamental ones um, that we would want to learn about. So we start with k-means, and a lot of people say it's the simplest techniques because it's simplest to understand and also very easy to implement and it's scalable. And instead of going through the steps of the algorithm uh, one by one, uh, we'll first look at a demo. And this is a demo uh, in D3, actually. So it would be using techniques that you learned about in the D3 videos. So in this demo, we have the data points in white and five clusters automatically initialized randomly by k-means, and they are assigned the different colors. And what k-means would do is that it would assign the data points to the center that is closest to. So these are centers or means, which is why we have named k-means. And once we assign the, the data point to the cluster, then we will recompute the means. So that means we're shifting the means to its new location. And now after the centers have been moved, then we can re do the reassignment. So now we can shift the data point to the closest mean that it is. And then we compute the new means again and do the new assignments, new means, new assignments. And until everything settles. So that means all the assignments do not change anymore. And then we stop the algorithm. As you can see, the assignment is pretty easy to understand. And also, the algorithm itself is very conceptually simple. So to summarize, what we saw there is that we will first tell k-means the number of clusters that we want. And then it will randomly initialize the cluster, center, or uh, means. And then it will assign an item to the cluster uh, where the mean is closest to. And after that, we will recompute or update the new means of all the clusters. And they will keep doing the above steps until the assignments do not change. So k-means is very simple. So what's the catch? So why do people like to use it? And what are the things that we need to be careful about? So one thing that we need to be really careful about is about how to choose k. And in fact, it is a pretty hard problem to solve. And the best way to determine k is to evaluate uh, your algorithm with real data. Because depending on the different data, the number of clusters or k can vary. And then another thing is that uh, k-means is what we call locally optimal. So meaning um, if you initialize the algorithm with different clusters, then you might have different uh, results. So the, rate, the way to fix it is to run the algorithm different times or a few times. And, and you will get different clusters. And the more times that the cluster assignment agree, then that's probably uh, the better assignments that you can get. Something to note, though, is that the algorithm speak can depend on the cluster assignment. So that means if you have a bad starting point, then it may require a lot more iterations to run. A good thing about k-means is it can work relatively well for large data set. The time complexity is big O d n log n. So n is the number of items, and d is dimension. So usually, dimension is not very big. And the number of data points n is a lot bigger, bigger than uh, the number of cluster k. 
So what you saw previously is k-means, so one of the simplest techniques. Another very popular way to uh, learn clustering is through hierarchical clustering. So a high-level idea is very simple, is to build a tree or hierarchy of clusters. For example, on the left there, you'll see how we form a tree uh, starting from just the data points A, B, C, D, E, and F in black. So this is an iterative process. So in the beginning, we'll first determine which data points to group. For example, data point A and C, we will first group them because they're closest to together. And similarly, for B and E, we'll also group them. And next, we want to determine where to group D and F. So for D, it's cl now closest to the cluster formed by B and E. So we'll uh, group them into cluster 3. So you can follow this process uh, iteratively to create a whole hierarchy of clusters, which usually is visualized as a dendrogram, which is shown on the right. So you'll notice that horizontally, we have all the data points laid out. And then vertically is the clustering distance. I mean, how far are the data points apart or are data points uh, between uh, data points and a cluster. And also horizontally, you will see the cut point. So that means if you cut at a certain distance, how many clusters would you get? So we you will see that we can almost get any number of clusters that you, we want, all the way uh, down to the number of clusters equaling the number of data points, or having one gigantic cluster. So which is why uh, clustering, often people will say, is a, you can get any kind of number of clusters. You can all the way get from just one cluster, everything put together, or you have kind of two clusters, three clusters, and so on. Which also means that the number of clusters really depend on the problem that you solve. And arguably, any number of clusters you would uh, essentially say is correct if it gives you uh, the right results. Since we need to merge data points or data points with clusters, we need to determine what distance function to use. There are a few ways. One is single linkage, the other is complete linkage, and also in between, average linkage. In single linkage, we merge two clusters whose closest members have the smallest distance. For example, in the ex example shown here, we have cluster 1, 2, cluster 3, 4, cluster 5, 6, and so on. And we merge cluster 1, 2 with cluster 3, 4 because the distance between data point 2 and 3 is smaller than the distance between data point 2 and 6. In other words, the similarity uh, determined here in single linkage scenario is equal to the similarity of the cluster's most similar members. In a complete linkage scenario, we merge two clusters such that the resulting cluster has the smallest diameter. So in the example shown here, again, we have cluster 1, 2, cluster 3, 4, cluster 5, 6. And we merge the cluster 1, 2 with cluster 5, 6 because the distance between data point 1 and 6 is smaller than the distance between data point 1 and 4. So in other words, in the complete linkage scenario, the similarity of two clusters is determined by the similarity of the cluster's most dissimilar members. And for average linkage, uh, we will be going for uh, in between scenario. And people uh, like to use average linkage because it's computationally more efficient. So that means instead of looking at uh, a lot of pairwise distances, we only need to look at the distance between the center of clusters. A very popular way to visualize hierarchical clustering result is using cluster dendrograms. For example, on the left here, we show the whole dendrogram as a tree. So you'll notice that this is not the most space efficient method, so which is why we also have radial clustering dendrogram shown on the right where here you can see that spatially you can pack a lot more uh, points in onto the screen while we can still see the hierarchy. So hierarchical clustering is very easy to visualize and very easy to understand. Unfortunately, it's not very scalable. So the time complexity is between n squared to n cubed. So that means if you have millions of data points, then it's not very scalable. However, it's great for understanding the concepts we can, because we can see uh, every single step in the clustering process. We can see how data points get merged, and then points get merged with clusters, and so on. The final method we're going to look at is called dbscan, which stands for density-based spatial clustering with noise. It's a great technique to learn because it received the Test of Time Awards and the top data mining conference, KDD 2014, which is an extremely prestigious award, meaning the technique stands the test of time. And it has still have impact today uh, as it was designed over 10 years ago. A great thing about dbscan is that it only needs two parameters. Uh, one is radius, and the other is the minimum number of points uh, needed to form a 
cluster. So how does dbscan work? We'll look at a simple example. So suppose every point here, solid point here, shown on screen is one data point. And initially, we do not have any cluster. So what dbscan would do is it would start with some uh, random data point. And then for each data point, let's say starting from data point A, then we'll draw a circle, which is why we need a radius uh, parameter. And within that radius, we look at how many points there are. If the number of points exceed the minimum number of points considered in the algorithm, in this case, let's say four, then we'll add all the data points in that circle to your initial uh, cluster. So that means if, say, I assign the color red to the data point A, then now all the four points in that radius would also be colored red. And once you have all these four points added to the red cluster, then you can repeat for every single point that you haven't colored yet. For example, you can move to the point to the left of point A, and you do similar procedure. So that means now you, again, draw a circle with radius epsilon. And again, you count how many points there are. In this case, there are five points in total. And you will color all those points red. So we follow this same procedure until you exhaust all the points. Or if you say, I cannot reach any more points anymore, then what do you do? You start a new point that you haven't considered. For example, point N. Then we start a new cluster, and you color it blue, let's say. So the benefit about dbscan is it can find clusters that are of irregular shape. For example, on the right there, you can see there uh, is one uh, roughly circular or spherical blue cluster. And then there's an elongated red cluster. Also, it's able to detect outlier points too. For example, you see there are data points that are pretty far away from those two main clusters. And you can think of those as clusters by themselves or outliers. So to understand dbscan, I highly recommend that you look at uh, an interactive demo. So link is shown here. In the demo, you can see how dbscan iteratively add points to cluster. You start with the mouth region, for example. And once it's exhausted all the points, then we start a new cluster in blue. And you see it gradually color more and more data points. In this video, we learned about three very popular clustering techniques, k-means, hierarchical clustering, and dbscan. They're all very easy to understand and to apply. So they can be very effective first techniques to try before trying the other more complex techniques.